Hey there, stampers and crafters, and welcome to our Saturday morning class. Once a month, I do a class on Saturday morning as opposed to um, Friday at noon. And the reason for that is because we are also, I'm doing this um, in conjunction with my Stamp It Demonstrator Group's blog hop. This is our fall blog hop this morning, launching right now. So in addition to um, the project that I'm going to be making today, for this project is my blog hop project. You're going to want to pop on over to my blog after and check out all of the awesomeness that my, my, my demonstrator group has been preparing for you guys. We've been very excited about this hop. This is the project that I am going to be making today. It is a tea light lantern card. Very cool. Um, this is a sympathy card, but it, it, I'll show you how easily this can be changed to, for any occasion. Um, but it's made with a Stampin' Up! Graceful Glass um, the, the graceful glass suite that is in the annual catalog. And I had a lot of fun with it. I'm going to show you the, a few of the project, uh, products that I used in it when we get started. Um, so while you guys are popping on board, let me tell you a little bit about the giveaways. So because it's blog hop day, this means, um, the giveaways, there, there'll be multiple types of giveaways. So the first one is, um, the comment entry. So if you are watching this either on YouTube or Facebook and you leave a comment on this video, you will be entered to win one of my three live prizes today. Prize Patrol are, I've got two artfully folded host stamp sets. And uh, all you had to do is leave a comment. In addition to that, at the 10 minute mark for the early bird drawing, um, I have the, this um, pop-up scrap bin. And so the pop-up scrap bin is, um, it's awesome. Everybody loves these. They, um, you know, they pop up, they go on your table. You can also use them in your car. This one, I mean, it's beautiful. This is our new, um, these are our new ones that with the Stampin' Up! logo. And, um, so I'll draw the winner at the 10 minute mark here. All you have to do is leave a comment. Um, I am broadcasting simultaneously on both um, Facebook Live and on YouTube Live. So hopefully it looks like comments are coming through. It looks like everything's going running smoothly. So yes, we always love it when that happens. <laughs> so anyways, this is my way, little way of giving back a little appreciation. Thanks for joining me and stamping with me today. But don't forget at the end of this video, you're going to want to click on the link in this video's description or go to stampwithtammy.com and check out the rest of the projects in the blog hop. It'll, it, my, my, um, my post there will have all the links. It'll tell you how to participate. And here's the best part. And well, actually the second best part, the best part is all the wonderful projects that everybody's made. But the second best part is, um, we have a, another prize patrol. So in addition to leaving a comment here on one of these videos and entering the live prize patrol, our blog hop prize patrol, which will be announced. The winner for this one will be announced on our next blog hop at the end of September, um, is for the lots of happy card kit. And to enter this one, this one has a little different entry. You will want to leave a comment on my blog with the hashtag, that's pound sign, stamp it contest, all one word. And the beautiful thing about this is you can enter this contest multiple times. It's free to enter. All you have to do is leave a comment on my blog and for multiple entries, leave a comment on every blog in the hop. And just make sure you leave that hashtag. You can leave a wonderful comment. You can leave whatever you would like, a little note to the, the blog post or anything, but make sure you include that because we do search on it when we um, draw our winners. So that's our after live prize today. Again, that's a slightly different entry um, than I normally have for my live. So first thing you want to do is leave a comment here on the video. And then after the video, pop over, take the awesome tour, get the awesome fall ideas and leave a comment with the hashtag stamp it contest on the blog. Again, those instructions are all on the blog. So that's our giveaways. Now, uh, back to our project, right? So this is what we're going to be making. If you're popping on, um, a little late, this is the, um, it's going to be a, a, a tea light lantern card. Very, it's actually surprisingly, shockingly easy to make. Had a lot of fun with this. This is the graceful glass suite that we're going to be using. And um, before we pop into that, it is September 1st, which means there are new specials in the Stampin', Stampin' Up! world. And I also have new ordering tutorial gifts for um, any orders that you place in my online store using my new hostess code that just launched this morning. I launched them twice a month on the 1st and the 16th. Um, and along with that hostess code comes um, new tutorial gifts. Now, one of these gifts... Um, if you place a $50 order in my online store is the Frosted Floral uh, Collection. Frosted Floral is a brand new bundle that's coming out in the holiday catalog, which leads me to 
The, the next piece of really exciting information, and that is the holiday catalog will be launching on Wednesday to customers. It will be available in my online store. All the cool ho holiday catalog stuff that you've been seeing, including that frosted floral bundle that you'll get an entire collection of instructions and ideas for projects to make with if you place a $50 order in my online store, will be available. The, the projects and the products um, will be available on Wednesday in my online store. Or if you're a demonstrator, you can order them now or you can order them in a demonstrator kit now. If not, Wednesday's not that far away. Or, you know, if you really don't want to hold on any longer, it is the best deal to sign up as a demonstrator. Also, the Something Spooky Paper Pumpkin Kit, the deadline to sign up is September 10th. Um, and you can sign up as a subscription or you can purchase in my online store a one-time subscription for that. And um, this is also very exciting because we're launching the holiday catalog and there's so many amazing things in there and everybody's like, oh my God, I want the whole catalog, right? I have uh, brought back the free grab bag um, and this is when you join my VIP club in the month of September. So this is the second best thing to joining as a demonstrator. Um, my VIP club, I have a special uh, website filled with videos and tutorials that are exclusive to the VIP club. You can get access to that as a demonstrator in my group or as a VIP club member. I launch three new video tutorials every month. They're just for members as well as over 20 card tutorials in addition to that. So um, it's, it's a fantastic, fantastic um, resource. Great place to go for ideas and instructions, written instructions, PDFs that you can print off and keep. Um, and in addition to that, you get free stamps, free catalogs, and a free grab bag if you join in September. The details on that are on my blog. Okay, so that's what's happening um, in Stampin' Up! World. So we, I, I know everybody's really excited on the edge of their seat for Wednesday for the holiday catalog, but um, they, don't forget, you can still get all that stuff now in the demonstrator kit. All right, so um, we are going to pop down to the table. I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, what we're making today, but don't forget, we got about two minutes before I draw the early bird drawing, and that is for this pop-up scrap bin. So be sure to leave a comment while you're on there. And uh, I hope you guys are... This is Labor Day weekend here in the U.S., so I hope you guys are all um, having something fun. I, I know for me, stamping is fun, right? <laughs> and therapeutic, because it's kind of needed. So one more thing um, before the end of the video... Before you pop over and check out the blog hop tour from my Stampa Demonstrator group, I have, and I'm not going to show them to you yet, I have some more cards with this graceful graceful glass suite to show you. Um, the one on top here is the one that we are going to be making today. It folds up flat. Um, so I'm just going to pop over here and show you again. This is the graceful glass suite. This is available right now in the annual catalog and in my online store. You don't have to wait for the holiday catalog for it. It's out right now and available. There's lots of great products in this suite. Um, but we are going to be using mainly the stamp set to create this card. There's a stamp set, a beautiful die set that makes it looks like st stained glass and um, the paper. And I'll show you the vellum paper in just a minute. But let me show you the card real quick. So it folds up flat. Like I said, we've got a, a nice little design on the front. And then when you open it, when your recipient opens it, it pops up. It's a fun little pop up card. And there's a spot in here for wait for it. As soon as I find where I just put it on my table of table of tricks. Oh my gosh, what did I do with the tea light? It was right in front of me. <laughs> well, that puts a damper on a tea light card when you can't find the actual light. Oh my goodness. Okay, so anyways, I'm sure it's going to pop up because I literally just had it right next to me. Unless I just threw it on the floor but I don't see it down there. So we're going to use our imagination on that tea light. But the tea light, you know, it's just a battery-operated little tea light. It pops right inside. Hopefully by the end of the video, uh, it'll turn up somewhere on my desk <laughs> while we're stamping. Anyways, and you can see, and I'll show you that. I'll just switch back to that little video again so you can see it in action. This is what it looks like when you pop that little tea light inside. And I know a lot of people ask, well, how do you give this to somebody in an envelope? And I always recommend a bubble envelope for something like this. You want like a bubble wrap envelope that they're going to be able to use. I just cannot get over that. I lost the tea light. It literally was right in my hand. Has that ever happened to you guys? You're about to do something and you've lost the main piece of what you're about to do. <laughs> oh, good times. Good times. Anyways. So we're just going to keep, oh, there it is. I, I found it. I found it. You guys. Ah, ha, ha, ha. All right. So, um, I had put the cards that I was just showing you on top of it. So that goes inside right here. So this is what the card looks like on top. It's beautiful with or without it. There you go. 
And, uh, and and I liked doing this as a sympathy card because I thought the little light in there just reminded me of light, a light of hope. Uh, and um, it just, I don't know, it had a little special thing. But you can see here on this stamp set, the painted glass stamp set that we'll be using, you could use have a beautiful day or a reason to celebrate for a birthday card or a wedding card. You could really make this go for any occasion. It does not have to be sympathy. And then the beautiful framelits, and we're going to use um, we're going to use these today that go along with that bundle, are called the stained glass, and they're made to look like stained glass. So we're going to pop into making this in just a second, but <laughs> before we do, we've hit that 10 minute mark. So hopefully this is all working well. There we go. So, which means um, we have the pop up scrap bin to give away. If you have left um, a comment here on the blog. Let me just do a quick refresh on that. Um, you will be automatically entered to win this. And then I have two more giveaways at the end of this video. So if you don't win the, the pop-up scrap bin, don't feel bad because there's more giveaways. All right, so our early bird drawing uh, winner, wait for it, is Pam Sinclair Steiger. Congratulations, Pam from Illinois. Be sure to fill out the prize claim form that is in the link in this video's description. You have just won the pop-up scrap bin, which is our early bird special drawing today. So everybody wants that. That is, <laughs> and then I have two more at the end for everybody. And those are the artfully folded hostess stamp sets. Not so easy to get, are they? All right. So let's continue on with our stamping. Um, so that's the bundle. Those are the stamps and the dies. And um, thank you, Susan. She loves the videos. I, I appreciate that. It means a lot. It means a lot. I love doing them for you guys. All right. And um, this is the paper. This is called Graceful Glass. It's vellum. And vellum is translucent. You can see through it. Um, we're going to be using this um, right here for this little square on the card. There's all kinds of really fun little patterns here that when you color them in, whoops, didn't mean to throw them around, look like stained glass. I'm just going to move this stuff out of the way so you can kind of see them a little bit better. There's two of each sheet in the in the pack. I love this one too. I think I think I could think of some other ideas um, to do with this. Like instead of one large window, you could make smaller windows and use this as one of the you know as one of the tea light pop up you know openings there. So many different things. So I would love to see the things that you guys come up with. You guys really come up with some great stuff after we have videos, and I, I love to see your projects after. So these are just a few more of the designs that are in this graceful glass vellum pack of paper that goes with this suite. I love this wavy one too. Lots of fun with this one. I'm, I'm feeling ocean vibes from this. I feel like it needs to be like blue and ocean. And So here's another one that could be a window, a nice stained glass window here. And so with this one, because there's two and there's two sheets, you can actually get four out of the pack. And then here's just another, this is another great like background, generic background. And now this piece, I wanted to point out these are the two pieces that we're using on this um, on this card. So this piece right here, I cut off just this little this little piece for the front. See that right there? Now I'm going to do maybe this one or one of these two for the for the card that we're going to make today. So I'll use them all and just do them slightly differently. All right, so let's get started. Who's ready to get started with the card? <laughs> All right, so um, I think what we'll do maybe to get started is um, do the coloring first. We are coloring on vellum, and I am using stamp and, stamp and Blends. So they're going to take maybe slightly longer to dry than I would give them a couple, a minute or two to dry after. Um, oh, and I almost forgot, very important piece here, as with all of my online classes, I have a free PDF here for you guys, and um, this is available for you. It includes the measurements on it, as well as the scoring, because I'm going to do some scoring today to create the pop-up card. The scoring will be definitely key when you're making it. This is free on my blog, on my blog hop resource page and all you need to do to get there and view the blog hop and enter the giveaway is click on the link in the video's description and you'll see it right there on the back it's got um, a list of all the supplies that I'm using today including the colors of the Stampin' Blend markers so I've got all that there for you nice and handy it's also got the URL to get right to this if you want to watch the video later so that if you're making this card later if you want to run out to the store and get your your little tea lights and get ready to roll and then you want to watch the video later and, and do it along with me um, that is the URL to type in to get back to this video later to watch the replay. Or if you have a smartphone and know how to use this uh, QR code, you can just zap that with your smartphone. Okay. So 
First thing we're going to do is take the um, pieces of vellum that are going to be colored. So I've pre-cut these according to that free PDF. It, it, it tells you what size to use. These are the two um, pieces of vellum here that we're using. And I'm just going to grab a little piece of grid paper and just slide it underneath here. It's not really going to bleed through the vellum like it would on the Whisper White cardstock. The, the, uh, the markers aren't. Okay. All right, Patricia, she says, so glad you're using the, vel the the Stampin' Blends. I've been wondering how to use them. I have lots of videos on the Stampin' Blends. If you go over to my stampatimi.com blog and click Stampin', uh, just click Video Gallery, you'll find a lot in there using these Stampin' Blends. I love them, and I, I, I really love using them. So because this was a sympathy card, and you know the Cardinal, he's a little um, symbol of our loved ones that have passed on. When you see him, he's always a little reminder of someone who's passed on. I really felt like he should stand out from the crowd. This was my opinion. So, um, <laughs> and I didn't always, like the other ones, the other ones I used Rich Razzleberry on, which I don't know that there's actually a Rich Razzleberry colored bird. I just loved the color. So I was really going more for the pretty colors than I was for realistic. But if you wanted to go realistic, um, you certainly can. I just, the bright, beautiful colors on this, I think really jumped out. And um, because we're on vellum, you can blend a little bit. It doesn't blend as great as it does on the white. But I really, blending wasn't my aim today. Um, I really wanted this to be very, very rich, dark um, color on the vellum. You're going to be able to see through it because it is vellum, obviously. So, um, you know, I, I wanted that. I wanted to keep that, but I want that, that cardinal just to pop right off. So I made him just a little different than everybody else. Okay. And then we're just going to go ahead with the pumpkin pie. So the color, I'm so sorry, you guys. That was so rude of me. I'm going to swap over to the nib. Each end has a brush tip end and a nib tip end. The, um, that was Poppy Parade, light and dark, that I just used there. I used light on the belly and then the dark. Each color has um, both. You do not need blends. Kelly's asking what a... St I, 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 I can't quite understand what you were saying there. But you do not need blends to color on vellum. You can use the regular markers. You can. I think you're asking if you can use the stamp pads. And you can. Yes. You can use just about any coloring medium on vellum. Just give it an extra minute to dry. It's the only, the only um, thing that you, you really want to keep in mind there. Because it's vellum, it takes slightly longer for it to absorb the color. So I think that's why I really want to start first with these guys because um, I want this to dry while we're um, while we're doing the rest of the card. Okay, so um, I've got the light, Daffodil Delight for the bellies here. And then I'm gonna outline the bellies with the darker Daffodil Delight. So just to give it a little um, a little dimension and I'll, I'm not really blending too, too much here. I just want it to pop just a hair. So just a little highlight around the edges there. And then back to the light again. So they all, in, in, in my in my card, now again, with your card, if you want to do different colors, if you want to make them different, different types of birds or do a different color scheme, I'm just going over them again a second time because I want that to be really, really dramatic on the, on the color difference there. I think you can kind of see it there on that. Do you want me to, do you guys want me to zoom in just a hair so you guys can see it? Can you see it okay? I don't want to make anybody dizzy by coming in too much, but I want you to be able to see the, the coloring on that. All right, so lastly, um, on this particular panel, I'm going to be taking the, the dark and light rich razzleberry. And again, these colors are on that free PDF. Just click on the link in the, in the uh, video's description. Okay, all right. I'm coloring on the front, Julie. That's a actually a very good question. And you could color either way. You can color on the back or the front. The reason why I'm coloring on the front is because it's I think it's bolder and darker. If you color on the back, it'll give you a little bit more muted look. And sometimes you want that with the stained glass. Sometimes you might want a muted look or with the vellum, depending on the project. But for this particular thing with the tea light behind it, I want these colors to be nice and bright, as bright as they can be. And so I'm coloring on the front of the vellum. Being translucent, that could go either way. And that was a really good question. So right now I've got the lighter of the rich razzleberries. 
and I'm just coloring portions. I, I, I'm not blending this time. I'm just coloring, to, because it's stained glass, I want them to be kind of different colors in the different sections, um, which is how it would be, right, if, if it were a real stained glass. Hi, Sandy. She says she usually colors on the black. It's, it does matter a little bit because it will be a little bit more muted if you color on the black, on the back, and on the, but it goes either way. Um, and again, a lot of times that's the look that you want. So it's okay to color on the back if you'd like. All right, so now you can see the difference here between the rich, dark, rich razzleberry and the light, rich razzleberry in the birds here just so so cool and I love this vellum giving us the the stained glass look would make a really good wedding card too oh good I'm glad that you like that zoomed in a little bit sometimes I find it helps to be able to see it really nice and nice and big especially if you're if you're viewing this on a phone sometimes it's hard to see the details Okay, so this was our first panel. Now let me move the grid paper. Um, you know what, I have solid, I have some solid card stuck here. So you can kind of see that's the coloring that I did. Now again, you can vary this. You can, you can make them different colors. You want it to be different birds. Um, but this is, this is just absolutely stunning. So I'm gonna put that aside for now. We have one more vellum panel to color and it's the one that's going to go on the front of the card. So remember I took that piece of, um, paper, which I already put away, and cut out, at least I think I did, ah, where did I put it, there it is, okay, remember that one had four different um, long pieces on the, uh, on the vellum, I wanted to show it to you again, especially if, you, if for those of you who came in late, but I can't seem to find where I put the paper, <laughs> well I found the tea light and I lost the paper, oh there it is, okay, so this is what the, um, this is what the sheet comes it's six by six and it comes with these four different designs so for this one i cut the this this section off and the measurements for it again are on that free pdf um on this one we i did the um i did the end right here okay all right so we're just going to color these guys in and now for this i'm going to use daffodil delight and um old olive All right, thank you, Caroline. That's very sweet of you to say. She's loving the videos, and she's learned a lot. So the old olive, I j I'm only using the dark old olive. I didn't use both on the, on the card, but you certainly could. And this one is a slightly different design than I originally did. Oh, I just love it. And I love the look of it. All right, so I think I'm gonna swap over to the nib. All right. Oops. Now, I don't know if I wanna do this little leaf ribbon that goes up to the top. I think I'm just gonna leave that one blank. I'm gonna leave it at just a plain black, uh, vellum space there, the color that it is. Okay, so next I'm going to take the dark and light of the Daffodil Delights to color in the flower. I'll start with the light. This I'm not gonna blend too much here, but maybe a little bit more on this one because the design's slightly different. Very pretty, isn't it? I'm gonna hold you up a little bit more. It looks like I was sliding down. <laughs> highlighting a little bit there all right so now our coloring is all ready for the card so I'll just move those out of the way so I am going to give this an extra minute to dry which is why we started with the coloring because it does take an extra minute to dry on the vellum as it would on um, paper would dry instantly or almost instantly okay so let's just move those off to the side and Let's go ahead and get started with the pieces of our card. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut all the pieces and then we'll do, and I'm back you back out again. 
and then we'll we'll make the card base. So let's cut all the pieces. Um, for the for for the most part, <laughs> through the magic of um, live video, I have done almost all of it for you. Um, and I'll just show you what I did here. Right, so this is the layering squares, framelit dies. So there's the the fifth largest. There's two whites, and the fourth largest. There's two blacks, so the black, the white will fit inside the black um, as a frame. Now for this one, we're gonna, I'm gonna cut. We need two of these. This comes from the stained glass dies, right here. It's this piece, so we need two, one for either side. So I pre-cut one to have it all ready for us, and um, oops, we'll cut the other one. Now this was also cut with the. Um, this is part of the vellum right here, one of the vellum designs. It was also cut with the fifth largest, the same as the white, because it's going to layer on top of the white on one side. All right, now I'm going to give you a little tip when we cut um, this stained glass. It's like a stained glass edging around the stained glass window. To, to, the adhesive I'm going to use on this is the multi-purpose adhesives. This is available in my online store. It's really easy to use, and I highly recommend it when you have an intricate cut-out die like this. So I've already done it with this one. I'll show you how to do it, because we need to. So the paper comes like this. We've got some rich razzleberry. And what I'm going to do is peel off one little piece here of this, peel off the top at least, and then we're just going to cut off a piece of it to use. Okay, so this is like a protective backing that I just peeled back here, and then we've got, it's sticky. It's like a big sticker. Pretty much what it's going to make, a big sticker out of this sheet. And then, oh, don't tell me I lost my scissors too. Man, it is one of those days. <laughs> Everything's gone. Okay, that's all right. We can, we can improvise with the paper cutter here. I'm just going to move our panels off to the side while we continue on. All right, normally I would just cut this with scissors, but seems my scissors seem to have gone. I, everything seems to be walking off my table today. I'm just going to cut this extra piece off and put that back in the package because we can use that for something else. And now we have where this, this actually can come off, this piece of backing. Although I'm going to leave it on because the little edges are overhanging and they're sticky. No, I'm going to take it off because I don't want them to be. Let's just cut that off because I don't want the sticky edges to get stuck on the um, big shot. Okay. Again, normally I would cut that with scissors, but can't find them. Can't find them. you got to improvise, right? We're going to come back to that paper cover in just a minute. All right, so I've got the Big Shot die cut machine. And we'll back it out even more so you can see what's going on here. I've got the magnetic platform one cutting pad. You could also use the precision base plate for this and the um, the regular platform that comes with it. I'm going to place that the um, the die right on top of our little scrap of rich razzleberry that's already stuck to the adhesive sheet. And we are going to cutting pad on top and run it through. All right, it is going to be so cool, isn't it, Callie? I love this card. Now, you'll see, I'm going to run it through a couple times. Why? Because this is a very intricate die. And um, I want to just make sure it cuts really good. So I'm going to run it through a couple times there, back and forth, just to make sure it's cut really well. And then... Let me take it off. We are going to take the um, dye brush. Mine's an old dye brush. <laughs> uh, but th this is also available in my online store. And so I'm going to just, this can just go in the trash. That's just the outer edge. I'm going to take the dye brush and use it to poke out all of those little teensy little pieces, or at least most of them. Now, if I had my picker-upper tool that's coming out in that holiday catalog, which I wish I did right now, I could poke whatever is remaining out with that. Since I don't have that available, hopefully I've got a yeah, I've got a, a paper piercer that we'll use instead. So when that's done, just 
poke this out. And these guys should be pretty much loosened up from that. So we can just kind of poke them out. So here's what I'm going to go ahead and do with these two. Okay, so that that's this is the die that we use from the stained glass for that. I'll just move this stuff over to the side. All right, I'm going to go ahead and attach these two. Now, you want two of those. I've got one already. But because it's really much easier just to kind of do this, since we've already loosened all that up, most of it will pop off when I peel off the protective backing. And because we put that multi-purpose adhes multi adhesive sheet on the back, it's like a big sticker right now. This is a sticker. It's sticky. We're just going to go ahead and stick it to the black panel. And it really makes it pop. So the black panel is going to be kind of like a frame. Okay. And that it's cut with the... Oh, crud. I cut them the wrong size. Oh, darn. Okay, well, back with the big shot then. <laughs> Hold, please. I don't want that. That's all sticky, so we don't want it to be stuck down. <laughs> Do you ever have one of those days when everything just seems like you're, you're, you've are you're lost it on the table? Seems like it's one of those days for me. Any, anywho, this is an easy fix. Since I cut the wrong size, we'll just go ahead and recut those squares. Bringing that magnetic platform back out. And you know what? Since this is a square and it's a regular die, I can cut two of these at once just by I'm just folding that in half. So my layering squares dies. And let me line it up so I make sure that I'm doing the right one here. Doing the right size this time. We want the one that fits. Ooh, beautiful one. Look, we've got a jumper. Jumping in the wrong set. Alright. So we want the die that fits that. I may have to update that PDF because I did write the die size on it and I think I wrote the wrong one. It's this one. Okay, so this is one, two. This is actually the third largest, not the fourth largest. So my bad on that one and my apologies. I will try to remember to update that um, PDF for you guys. So then what happens is... Post, you know, that I would put it down there to just hold that steady. But I don't, so here we go. Just crank that through real quick. <laughs> Measure twice, cut once. So right, Debbie. I thought I had everything all set for you guys, and I had it all pre-cut for you. And I lied about being able to fold that one over and cut two because it didn't, but that's all right. I'll just cut a second one. That's not even the right size. Look at that. It's not the third largest either. Oh, we're just going to keep going today. Oh, boy. How many squares can I use today? Dang. Okay. So we're on to the second largest. Let me see my card. Yep. Okay. I think this is it. <laughs> oh, this is why you watch me, right? So you feel better about yourself when you go to make something. And you're like, well, if Tammy can mess up that many times and come out with a pretty cool card, I'm pretty sure I can do this. <laughs> oh, good times. It's black and it's cardstock, right? Okay, let's see if this fits it. This was the second largest square, and I do need to make a note to myself to update, and this was the right size, to update that PDF for you guys. So if you have already downloaded that free PDF and printed it off, be sure to, uh, to make a note on it that you actually want the second largest square, not the fourth largest square. And my apologies. And then this is already sticky and it's gonna stick right to it because we use those adhesive sheets. Isn't that awesome? Okay, stay tuned. We're gonna, we need to cut one more of those big squares out. And a little bit more black here. Is that too wide? How I store my things on my tabletop. <laughs> you must not have watched the beginning of this video <laughs> where I lost everything that I was just about to start with. <laughs> 
That's funny. I have like an art desk here and it's got like um, little cups on the side that I put my stuff in, like a scissors and a poker and that stuff so that I can just grab it when I'm using it. And uh, yeah, and I pretty much, I, I lost the tea light. I've lost the scissors. I've lost just about everything. So I may not be the best one to show you how to store things because <laughs> I'm not doing such a great job with it today. <laughs> oh, good times. Good times. Yeah. All right. So um, on the flip side, third time's a charm. I did figure out the right size of square that I originally used on this card, and that was the second largest. So we're just going to go ahead and take, so we had two of these cut. Hmm. Thank you, Mary. Thanks for, thanks for that love. She's like, you're only human. We all do it. It happens. It's fun to watch somebody else do it, right? <laughs> I used to feel that when my kids got older and they were able to go to the restaurant and, and not scream through, through dinner. I used to like have that sympathy for the other parents and be like, Oh, it's not me this time. <laughs> so you're like, it's not me. I'm just happy to hear it happening to somebody else. So yes. So here we go. These are our two panels. Um, and we'll just go ahead and keep rolling here. I, I, I do think this was correct. So I am going to edit this one. It is not the fourth largest square for the black. It is the second largest for the black. But I do believe this is still correct for the fifth largest square for um, the white. Let's just see if that fits inside. I don't think I need to edit that one. And it does. It fits inside perfectly. Isn't that beautiful? It goes right in there. I love those layering squares and this works so nicely with it too. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna attach this little piece of vellum that we also cut out with the fifth largest uh, square. And I've got some snail adhesive for that. You could also use those multi-purpose sheets on this. And that's just gonna go right over. So the white gives the, that vellum just a little pop behind it because the vellum on the black would be, I think, a little bit too dark. And then that can go right inside that frame. Boom. Boom, one side. Now on this one, we're gonna stamp it. And again, that stamp set has multiple um, sayings on it, if I can find it. <laughs> there we go again. I don't you know what, oh, I should just leave everything right in there. Okay, so you can, um, you can use celebrate for a wedding card, a birthday card. Today we're making a sympathy card. It could even be a thank you card. So this could go for just about anything. I'm using the Memento Black Ink. And we're just gonna ink that up right in the middle of that square. There we go, with deepest sympathy. And then we'll just go ahead and take that snail adhesive and attach this to the other, the inside of the other black square there. So now we have, all of our pieces are ready to rock and roll. Okay, so these two are not the correct size. You know what, we'll go ahead and attach, since we've done our attaching already, let's go ahead and attach um, this to its its frames. So I've pre-cut these and the measurements again are on my um, on my free PDF that's on my stamplecamy.com blog. The easiest way to get there is click the link in this video's description, or you can go to stamplecamy.com and click video gallery for all of my videos, okay? So that is going to stick the vellum to the white and then the white to the black. Now just a note when putting adhesive and I didn't do a really good job with that. I should have paid better attention. Um, you, can, you can see a little show through. So I do like to recommend to actually stick it behind pieces that are busy because you don't notice it if it's behind a busy piece. Most people probably won't notice it anyways. Okay, so there are our pieces all ready to rock and roll and our and our bird piece there. Everybody's ready to rock and roll. It is now time to cut the card. <laughs> are we ready for this? This is a very, very cool part. I think you guys are gonna love. So we are making a tea light lantern card. This is the fold that it will have. It's gonna fold flat when we're done. And this is what it looks like. And then you pop the little tea light in here. This is our, our what our finished card is gonna look like. Okay, so let's move these sections out of the way. And um, we're gonna start with our scoring. Again, the scoring um, lines are on the free PDF on here. 
I've got a full eight and a half by 11 sheet of crushed curry cardstock. And I've got the Stampin' Up! paper trimmer because that has a scoring blade that comes with it. So here's what's going to happen on the long side. So this is eight and a half by 11. It's just a full sheet here. On the long side, we're going to score at two and three quarters. Five and a half. So slide that through to the five and a half. Score. And then eight and a quarter, which we need to just pop that little arm out for because the eight and a quarter is way over there. And score. And then we're going to turn it. And on the short side, we're going to score it at four. And I have that measurement wrong on the PDF. I, I have some updating to do on that PDF because it says four and a third, but it really should be four and a quarter. So it's right smack dab in half. Okay, so you can use a bone folder to burnish these. Probably the best way to do that. So here are our, our lines. Eventually, it's going to fold in half like this. But first, we want to cut a slit right down the middle here. So for that, we're going to want the blade part. So I'm going to line this middle score right up with the blade. And that's the four and a quarter mark. So put this right at the four and a quarter mark. Move the blade right down. See that little arrow right there on the blade? I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to zoom in a hair. See that arrow? Line it up with the score line right there. It's perfect, right? And then we're going to take it down so you can see the bottom part here. I'm going to take it all the way down to here. So that has just cut us a score line right in the middle. Okay. So here's how it's going to work. Oh, you know what? Before I get rid of that, we need to score this one in half. So the vellum gets scored. The scoring, I believe this is, this, the size of the vellum is four, so at two inches. I don't know. That one is five and a quarter, so two and through two and five eighths. Two and five eighths. You want to score the vellum, so it's right in half. So that's going to fold right in half. Okay. All right. So, we've got this. The next thing we, we want to do is cut out the panel that this is going to go in. Okay, sorry, the card's going to go like this, right? So it's half. So I'm going to unfold and refold so it's this way. So our slit is in the middle up here. And we are going to take... Over to the square dies that I have been throwing all over the place today. And they are quite a mess, so I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna make sure that I use the right one this time. And it's this one, the same one that we used to cut the blacks with, which is the second largest, second largest square. And, oops. Oh my gosh, you guys! <laughs> Listen, I think I'm gonna have to do a, a thing like I'm not allowed to work on a holiday weekend anymore. <sighs> Throwing stuff all over the place. Um. I'm losing everything left and right, but I still love you guys. <laughs> this is still the highlight of my weekend. All right, so this goes, we've got magnetic platform still down there. We've got the square, which I'm going to put sort of in the middle here, just like this, so it overhangs. See this overhang right here? This is actually going to... Um, this is going to create the square opening that, that's going to actually turn into a rectangle. And I really want a posty note. And since I don't have a regular one, I'm just, forgive me for using the Prize Patrol posty note on this, but I don't want that square to move. And because we've got it doubled up, um, there we go. Because we got it doubled up, the magnet wasn't holding it down. So I'm just going to run that through twice, just to make sure that it gets through both sides. Because I didn't the, when, we, when I tried to do two a second ago. So, there we go. Just a reminder to leave a comment so you can enter to win. And when we're done, that pops out. And this is what it gives us. 
that big rectangular opening, which is in, going to be, there's the magic right there, <laughs> that's going to be the center of the card, and that's where the vellum's going to fit in. Ta-da! Did you see that coming? That was like a big, <laughs> in the end, it's like a little surprise, like you weren't sure where that was going, right? You're like, oh my God, what is she doing? <laughs> Stop, don't cut, don't cut, right? But no, that is ex exactly what I meant to do. All right. All right. So next thing we're going to do here is use some tear tape to adhere the rest of the pieces to the card. Now tear tape is, is a little bit stronger than snail. And because we're going to be pulling this, this card a little bit, I definitely want it to be a little bit stronger than... Um, a little bit stronger than snail. Snail is good for stationary stuff, but if it's got movement, I like to use something strong. So, and I may actually, I'm, I might use a little both on this vellum part. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach the vellum to the center opening. So maybe I'll put a little snail here on the side. I'm cheating a little bit. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> it's strong. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, this is one fun class, right? You never know what's coming next. Okay, so now these guys are going to fit. I want the birds to fit right in the middle. That that score line's got to go right in the middle. And there we go. Press that down. So here's our card. And I'm going to burnish that just a little bit. Bone folder would have been awesome if I had that handy. Okay. So there we go. That's the center of our card right there. Actually, I do have a bone folder. Woo! I got something. <laughs> Something's happening. Something's good. Okay. Thank you, Lori. She says you rock. Okay. Very cool. All right. So next up, we are going to attach these two panels together. It is that easy, Kathy. It really is. Trust me. If you've been watching this from the beginning and saw all the errors that I made, and we still have this whole card together and... In, you know, just a few minutes. Oh my gosh, right? Even with mistakes. Because they happen. They happen. They're part of the fun crafting world. When you give it to somebody, you're not just giving them a piece of a heart, your heart. You're giving them a piece of your heart and soul and <laughs> a little bit of all the little... They have a story behind them, right? And inside of them when you give them these handmade cards. Somebody's going to get this and they're going to be like, oh my gosh. And you can say, and when I made it, I lost everything on the table and it still came out beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Danette. She's giving me a little chilly. You got this, girl. <laughs> All right. So now the one thing I want to make sure is when I press down that these are lined up. So let's, let's go back in a little bit there so you guys can see what's happening. Okay. So that's stuck together. And again, it's only on the two edges here. Not in the, you don't want to stick the middle together because you want that to come apart. Okay. And a little bit there. All right. So our card is actually complete. That's it. Our card is done. We just want to finish decorating it now. So just a little bit of assembly on the pieces that we've already put together. Oh, Mary, you're so sweet. Do you practice going live? Clearly I didn't, right? <laughs> Maybe I should have. <laughs> Maybe if I practiced this one a little bit more, I wouldn't have lost everything. I just, you know what? I like to keep it real. Keeping it real. All right, so we put this um, little border, little edge border here already together. We've already colored it and put it together. So that's going to be the front of our card right here. And then when we open it, these two panels are going to go on the inside. So just a little bit of snail on either side. We've got one. And And we're done. Our card is complete. And we got a little pop-up in the center. And our little tea light pops right in there to show off. And you know what? I'm going to pop back, especially for those of you who are viewing late. This is what it will look like. It's hard for me to stand it up because the camera's actually on uh, viewing it straight down. But this is what it will look like when it's down. Oh, thank you for the heart stream. I love you guys. Oh, so much fun. Even, even with actually sometimes it makes it more fun. <laughs> right? When we have all these good, good things happen to us. All right, so, <laughs> yes, the only way to make a card, Debbie, is to lose at least one item in, the, in there. So, anyways, this is our pop-up lantern card. The instructions right now, we just shared those, and there's a free PDF on my blog. And that means um, I have 
Oh, we're going to draw winners and then I'll share with you, um, don't pop off yet, a couple of cards made with this graceful, the graceful, graceful, oh wow, that was a tongue twister, the graceful glass suite. So this is the graceful glass suite that we just used. I've got some more ideas to share with you. Let's draw two winners, so don't pop off just yet. Let's draw two lucky winners um, and both winners are going to get the, um, <coughs> excuse me, artfully folded. Um, here we go. It's the Artfully Folded Hostess uh, stamp set, which is hard to get. And let's pop you over to the, the giveaways right now. And our first winner of the Artfully Folded Hostess stamp set goes to Terry Deason. Congratulations, Terry. And the second one is Marilyn Scorker. Congratulations. So Pam won the pop-up bin. Terry and Marilyn won the um, artfully folded hostess stamp sets. Hard to get stamp sets. Congratulations to everybody. Be sure to fill out that prize claim form that is linked in this video's description or go to stampwithtammy.com and fill out the form. And before we pop off, let me share with you some more ideas. So we've just made a pop-up tea light card um, using the graceful glass uh, suite. Okay, and the instructions are here in the video. So here are a couple of more, a couple more um, ideas using this suite. So here you can see the die around the window of this sympathy card, beautiful with the little bird, colored in very similar colors that we used. And here is, congratulations, Terry, she's excited. She says, I've never won anything before. Um, here's another one using, this is a die set on the side too that was colored in. I love, love, love this. So this, and let me show you the die that was used here. It's this, so here's the die set that matches the stamp set that we used. We actually used the square. So it's this die. It's this die for the circle, see it? And it's there's two of them, one on either side. So it's dyed in black and then colored in. How awesome is that, right? Very cool, very cool. All right, so here is another sample from that set, very beautiful. And the last one I have to share with you right now uses that vellum. Here's the vellum colored in, similar vellum, uh, just a slightly different design than what we used here, that graceful glass vellum. All of these are available in my online store, all of these supplies. And don't forget, this is Blog Hop. It's our fall Blog Hop theme, the Stamp It Demonstrated group. If you popped on late, you do not want to miss this. Pop on over to my blog at the resource page linked in this video's description. Get the free PDF. Be sure to leave a comment there so that you can enter to win, especially if you didn't win one of these lives, but you can win both in this particular case because this is a gift from my Stamp It Demonstrator group for the Blog Hop. Leave the hashtag on my blog, Stamp It Contest, in order to enter the Lots of Happy Card Kit and then take the tour. Enter by leaving a comment on all of the bloggers' hops. Their projects are amazing. You do not want to miss them. So this was uh, project number one. This is the start of your tour. Pop on over there, get all your little freebies, and then jump on, jump on board and check out the amazing projects from my Stampin' Demonstrator group. Thanks for joining me today.